everyone. So we're here on location, one of my favorite places for photo shoots. And we're gonna track in or hike the last few yards and take you along with us. So come on along with us. The weather is gorgeous right now. Just like when I'm driving the car though. Linda Gerard likes your lens. My lens? Yes. This is a 200 f2 Nikon lens. It's probably my favorite lens, but it's also um, very heavy. And when you combine it with my camera, together they weigh, I think, almost 11 pounds. So it's a great lens for my photo shoots because I love the uh, focal length on it. And, um, but it is heavy and I do get tired during a photo shoot. So I usually lay on the ground and put this on what we call the bean bag. And you can lay this sideways on the ground, put the camera this way. You can also stand it up, put the camera this way or put the camera in here. Since um, this would require a really hardy specialized tripod, I don't usually use a tripod. Well, I never use a tripod with this. I just use the, uh, since all my photos, I, I enjoy taking them from a lower level. I just, uh, the, ba the bag works great and we don't have to carry extra tripods and that kind of thing. So this is, um, it's a prime lens, which means that you can't zoom in or out. You zoom in with your feet. 
and you zoom out with your feet. So, um, but it gives a gorgeous bouquet or bokeh, however you pronounce that, and that's that that blurriness behind your subject. It just looks like silk. It's just uh, it's just smooth as butter, and I absolutely love that look. It's just what I personally love. And so that's why I use this usually for my photo shoots with the girls. And um, the, the lens that I use at home is my 85 1.4, which is also a portrait lens, but it just has, and it also has a beautiful bokeh uh, to it, but this one more so. And this one you have to have some distance between you and the subject which makes it a little harder. I just posted that picture of uh, one of our girls on the beach. That was my latest uh, photo uh, fine art uh, project that I did. And this is the lens that I would use for something like that. But to get that scene, I have to be, I think I was probably um, 30 feet away from her, which makes it really hard to shout out directions because Gary can't hear me and, and it's just, and the light just moves fast. I mean, you just have such a short window. Yes. Teresa Dye wants to know if that lens will fit a Canon T6i. I know because it's a, it's a uh, Nikon. And they're very exclusive to, to the brand, so, and Canon also. But Canon should have a lens that's, uh, I think they have an F200 or a 200 F2. I don't know about that lens, I really don't. I mean, I know it won't fit that one, but I don't know if there's uh, a, a, another similar lens. I think theirs is a 200 F2 also for Canon, but it, this one in particular will not fit another brand. So, um, is that all the questions for now? Okay. So, anyway, so on that portrait and on the beach, I'm really far away, and when the, the ocean, the waves are crashing and the wind is, is blowing, that was a really trick. I just had, I got my workout in running to tell Gary what I needed, running back to the camera, laying on the ground, and yes, I had sand all over my front. I took something to lay on, but when you're trying to move fast, you just don't care. If you stay on this, you don't have time to move everything around, keep yourself neat and tidy. So um, anyway, that's, that's the uh, challenge with this lens, is you have to be so far away. Sometimes your directions are not heard. And usually it's just Gary and I doing this together. Sometimes we have another adult, which the more hands on deck, the easier it is. But sometimes it's just the two of us and we just do the best we can. This kind of light right now is the worst kind of light for photography. So this, we're out here to show you where some of my favorite spots are. But this high noon or almost um, high noon sun, is the worst kind of lighting and I don't carry extra light other than this uh, some people, they're called ice lights but this is not the ice light brand it's it's the same type of thing it's a little inexpensive it's an inner less expensive option So I don't, I don't use flashes when I'm doing these uh, photo shoots. The less equipment that we can carry, the better, because like I said, it's just the two of us and this stuff is heavy. And I want to learn and just tackle what we have, what the environment presents with, to us. And uh, so this I started carrying recently and it's just a light that it's, it's like a, one side is, is warm light. And the other side is cool light, and you can turn it up or down depending on how bright you want it. It's not like having a flash, but it does improve the lighting when I need it. And if I need it up close and, and a little extra light in somebody's face or something. We also carry... We also carry um, a reflector. I don't have it with 
me now. But we have one of those round, I think 32 inch reflectors. And uh, also lately I've started to carry white core board as a reflector. And because that you can cut it up into, it's just a regular white core board you buy at the craft store that you do your little science displays with or uh, other projects. Um, that's an awesome reflector. I've been using that in the studio for a while now and I really like that. Um, but it's really easy to carry a small piece with you when you just need a little reflecting and very lightweight. So this is kind of, not everything, but pretty much the, the bulk of our equipment when we're on location. So let me show you why this is one of my favorite locations. And Gary and I were already out here this morning. I took, I don't know how many pictures this morning for a project I'm working on. And uh, the preliminary photos, I still need to do a few more, but we were out here at seven in the morning because since this kind of light is too harsh, there's just too much contrast and the shadows are so hard and uh, edges are so sharp. Um, I probably have bags under my eyes because of the way the light is coming down on me. It's just uh, the, the lighting is not pretty light for pretty photos. Um, unless it's something specifically a photographer is looking for. Generally speaking, this is very difficult light to work in. So why work in it? So this morning before the sun fully came up over the trees, we were out here photographing in here in this mossy area and this is the coolest tree this is i don't know if you can see it very well but this tree that it's not fallen it seems to have broken but it's still growing over here and it's got all these not i just love trees and the gnarliness of the trees i absolutely love 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 so these trees are not only gnarly, but they have this green, beautiful moss growing all over them, and it grows up into the goes up into the branches, and then it just comes around. They're fine. Just can anybody say fairy tale scene? <laughs> That's what when I first came upon this place, I just I thought I had gone to heaven. So there's all this moss. And and actually, if you look at um, the Petite Boutique Girls Bodice on the website, you will see the blue dress, and one of our girls is modeling it on this tree right here. She's laying in the crook of this tree, and this is the tree that she was laying in. And it was uh, right before the sun went down, so the best time to take photos is uh, right before the sun's come uh, as the sun's coming up before the hard light hits and uh, uh, in the evening right before um, uh, right as the sun is setting when the hard light is gone but it's still bright enough to take photos so um, uh, that's we were doing some photos out here yesterday afternoon too and um, or yesterday evening until um, it got a little too dark but, um, and I will probably be back this afternoon, this evening to, to finish up a, up a few things. But this is the coolest place. So this is one of the places. And um, there are paths going through the, the trees in here. Right now, the trees have lost their leaves. But when it's greener, it's absolutely beautiful too. So it, every, in different seasons, it has, it's just gorgeous. Of course, during the winter, it gets so cold. I don't want to be out here. So I'm just so happy that spring is here and we can get out here and do some stuff. And look at these gnarly branches on this tree. They're all covered with moss. And then this tree right here, part of it has seems to have fallen. Be careful. So there's all this moss things. Oh, let me show you. The girls were out here with us yesterday, and while I was doing my work, we didn't do a photo shoot with them yesterday, but they were out here playing, and they were spring fairies. So they were uh, making up potions to, to protect the forest and things. So here's what they left behind. I didn't see that until we were ready to leave yesterday.
yesterday I had to take a photo of their their bark containers with their potions and their they left it just like this. I just thought that was so cute. All right. Let me see if I can get around here without getting caught in the yesterday the one of the trees caught my hair just like Snow White in the running in the forest in the original Disney movie. That's the way I felt. Because the tree had caught gotten a hold Gary had to help me get my hair untangled from the branches. So this tree right here, it's all kinds of hollows and creatures under there. It was a lizard, but it's all covered with moss. And the girls had actually, you can stand over here and show them how that tree goes up in the goes up and keeps going. So I don't know if you can see, but this is why I absolutely love. You could make a whole little fairy community in here. If you didn't have a job. <laughs> It would be an awesome hobby. Oh, the tree's coffee. All right. And then this tree just seems to go on forever. It's just so gorgeous and gnarly. And so I have some ideas already for how to... Oh, look at this. I hadn't seen this. Oh. one of my favorite places um, apart from the beach which we're not near the beach anymore um, so we just make the best you find the great places everywhere you go it doesn't have to be right here or um, the beach or specifically it's just you just go explore find some awesome places and um, uh, the crown the fairy tale crown photos were actually done just by the side of a couple of trees in the yard that uh, had some bushes in the background for a background because one of the things that I look for is that there are no white globs. Now that I'm getting more more in tune to what, what my wishes are for the final product, I realize I don't want these... Um, white globes nest. sometimes they're pretty in the background uh, like the light coming through the trees and that sometimes that's just a distraction and if I had to do it over if I could do some of those older photos over again that would be the one thing I would change but um, uh, it doesn't make them bad photos but I prefer to have a nice even tone background behind my subjects so that's one of the things I look for, especially in the forest, because when the light peeks through, you may not catch that until it's too late and you're going through your photos on your computer. And then you can you can darken those spots if you want to, but um, sometimes it's just, that's, I try to have my photos the way I want them, to where I can now turn them into art without having to fix them. So um, uh, that's just one of the things I look for. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons to shoot when the sun is low in the sky, whether it's coming up or, or going down. It, there's no big globs of light coming through the leaves. And, and um, so the fairy tale crown was done, and just it was just such a perfect spot. It wasn't that big of an area, 
but that's all you see in the photos. So just look at the smaller picture in terms of what's actually going to show in the photo. You, you know, I love these trees and everything, but when the photos are done, you really don't see a lot of the tree. You just see a small section. And so you need to just think about that. How, how wide are you going to shoot that and, and how, how wide are you going to crop it so that you don't get um, uh, discouraged if there's, you know, a car parked to the side or something. So just leave the car out of there. Just angle it so that the background is uh, nice and even and, um, and you'll be able to get right up to that object that you don't want in your picture and still have your, your composition the way you want it. So I think that's all we wanted to share. I thought it would be so fun to show you all the stuff and, uh, and let you just dream along with me and enjoy the fairy tale theme the way, as much as I do. On the first day of spring. On the first day of spring. Happy, happy spring day, everyone. See you around the web and we hope to do more videos very soon. Don't forget, these videos will be on our um, channel in YouTube. And um, also don't forget to subscribe so that you can uh, be um, alerted every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching everyone. Talk to you soon.